So let's solve this problem together. I'm going to solve part of that, then I'm going to ask you to solve the remaining. So pay attention carefully. Let's see what we have here. A beam, which is subjected to three loads, is shown. A moment of 4,500 pound-feet counterclockwise is acting at A. A distributed load of 700 pound over feet is acting somewhere between A and B as shown in the figure. And a concentrated load of 1,300 pound-feet is acting on the very right end of this section. The cross-section of this beam is shown. So the moment of inertia is 1,348 inch to the fourth, and distance of centroid to the bottom part of that is 5.8. Assume that these are provided, so don't need to determine those properties. With what we have here, we are looking for how much is the maximum bending stress, positive or negative, in the entire beam. So we are looking for two answers. What is the maximum positive stress in the beam? What is the maximum negative stress in the beam? Okay? At the beginning, what is the first step? Shear and moment diagrams, right? For shear and moment diagrams, we need to determine the reaction forces. I'm going to do that. There will be two reaction forces, one at A, and two at A, one at B. At A, we have AX and AY. At B, we have just BY in the vertical direction. And then we can use some of the, uh, we can use the equilibrium equations to determine the reaction forces. Some of the forces in X direction simply says, the horizontal component of the reaction force at A is zero. Some of the forces in the y direction says we do have two reaction forces at A and B, AY and BY, and they should be equal to the downward force of the distributed load, which is 700 pound-feet, multiplied by the length at which this force is acting on, which is 8 feet, and we have a concentrated force of 1,300 pounds. With that, we cannot determine AY and BY because we have two unknowns, one equation. I'm going to use the third equation, which is some of the moments about A. First, we have a moment at A, which is 4,500 pound-feet. I assumed that the counterclockwise is positive. That doesn't matter. We can consider each direction as positive in this case. So 4,500 pound-feet positive. Then we do have a moment caused by BY. Again, that would be counterclockwise, so that gets positive sign. The moment produced by that would be BY multiplied by distance of B to A, which is 2 plus 8 plus 5, which is 15. And then we do have two external forces. First, the distributed load. The magnitude of the force, as we discussed, is 700 multiplied by 8. This is producing a moment counterclockwise, so... I use negative sign for that. Where is the resultant force of that distributed load? That would be on the middle of that. What is distance of that to A? 5 plus 4, which is 9. The moment produced by 1,300 pound-feet would be 1,300 multiplied by distance, which is 5, 5, 8 to 20. From that, BY would be 47, 90 pounds, and AY would be 21, 10 pounds. Okay? So we have determined the reaction force. Now we are ready to go and determine the shear diagram. For the shear diagram, um, I'm going to start from the left end. What is the initial value of shear at left end? Is there an initial value? Yes, there should be because there is a reaction force. So reaction force at that point is 2110 upward. So that would be positive 2110. The shear diagram remains constant from A to the beginning of that distributed load, like this. But once we reach to that distributed load, there will be linear change in the shear value. The amount of change depends on the this magnitude of that distributed load. So slope of the line would be 700 pound-feet, or the given value. You tell me, how much would be the magnitude of shear force once I get to the end of that distributed load. The change in the, the shear diagram would be equal to the total distributed force. How much is that distributed force? 700 multiplied by 8, which is 5,600. So there will be a, a change of 5,600 pounds. So at the, at the other end, I would get 
to this value, which is 2110 minus 5600, which is negative 3490 pound. Okay? What happened to shear from the right end of that distributed load all the way to B? Nothing. It remains constant. Now, there will be another jump at B. It goes upward. The magnitude of the jump would be equal to the reaction force, which is 4790. And that increases the shear force to 1300. After that, it remains constant all the way to the right end. And at the end, it gets back to zero by the concentrated force. So it remains zero at that point. It gets to zero and shows the calculation is right. OK, now you go ahead and determine first the moment diagram, and then determine how much are the stresses in that beam, positive and negative.